Well, good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful sunny day, bright blue skies, a couple of little clouds here and there, more clouds over there. I'm heading in that direction, blue skies in that, in that direction. We had a lot of rain last night, so I got a room at the local pub. There was no uh, accommodation anywhere else to be found. Even the local uh, campground was completely flooded. So uh, luckily I had accommodation at the pub. The room was okay. The pub was called the Hilltop Hotel. Decent accommodation, food was excellent. So today's trip, we're going to go from Omeo. Uh, I've just hit the Benambra uh, Road, and that is Sealed Road, all the way until uh, Beloka Gap, and then it is dirt track. We're going to go along the Limestone Road track and head towards uh, Limestone Creek Hut, and eventually uh, Mount Pinabar and Tom Groggan and then up to Threadbow, Jindabyne and back towards Sydney. So that, uh, we're so basically slowly making our way back towards the New South Wales side of the Snowy Mountains area. This is my, well, second day of, of travelling solo. Yesterday was spent driving from Mount Mary to Omeo. So at this point I am literally driving into the cloud. It's on the road in front of me. You can see that on the dash cam there. I am well and truly in the cloud. And visibility is dropping rapidly. By the way, this is the middle of summer. I wasn't meant to be filming today, but I couldn't resist stopping and checking this out. So I've briefly stopped by the side of the road. This is Mount Hotham. We're at an altitude of 1600 meters above sea level and I'm standing in cloud. Behind me is a massive drop. You'll have to take my word for it. It is a massive steep drop. There is nothing there. I'm literally standing in the cloud and you can see behind me, if I stand like this, the cloud is actually rolling across the hill, across the road. Visibility has dropped to uh, basically 0%. I can see, I can barely see the front of my car when I'm on the road. I've stopped here so visibility is a little bit better, but when I'm driving, I can barely see past the front of my car. And the temperature has dropped to about 12 degrees. There's rain coming. So I'm going to not camp tonight because it's going to be freezing cold. I camped in the rain last night and so today I think I'm going to find a room and try and find uh, some warm accommodation, warm and dry accommodation and then I think uh, weather permitting we'll be back uh, on the tracks tomorrow. I've just left Omeo, it's uh, 9.30 in the morning and I'm going to be driving along uh, Limestone Creek Road for, uh, I don't know how, how long, but for about that long, <laughs> it's on the map. Uh, I'm heading towards Mount Pinabar. Whether or not I get there today, we will, we will see, because although at the moment it's beautiful, sunny weather, blue skies, there's a few little white clouds around, they are forecasting very heavy rain. In fact, it rained all night last night, but we got very lucky because apparently the storm cell uh, missed this particular area and went uh, via a different area. So the place where I stayed didn't get any rain, which was good. So at some point today, we're going to leave the sealed road and hit the dirt tracks. I'm hoping that the tracks are in drivable condition. I'm by myself, the last thing I want is to get bogged or you know, slide into a ditch or a tree or off an edge or something like that. So I need to take a little bit of extra care simply because I'm by myself. It's a beautiful day, beautiful countryside. In this series, I'm going to be exploring a small part of this amazing countryside.
For the first half of the trip, I'm travelling with some mates. And in the second half, I'm heading off by myself. The Vic High Country is a four-wheel driver's paradise. It has tracks to suit all types of abilities from easy to difficult. It has river crossings. It has forests and mountains. And we're going to experience it in all sorts of weather conditions. I get a chance to rescue fellow travellers and settle the age-old question of does my car sink or float? So we just arrived at a turn-off. This is Misery Trail behind me. Warning, extreme weather conditions may affect sections of this road. The road can be subject to snow, ice and heavy rain. So we've had heavy rain yesterday. The track looks, so far it looks fine. So I'm going to try it and see how it goes. Simply because I like the name Misery Trail. Uh, it has a ring of adventure to it and I like adventure. Hopefully it won't turn into misery for me. So let's check it out. So I set off on Misery Track. It starts off as an easy enough track, flanked on both sides by native forest. The weather is slightly cool, the drive is easy. I'm really enjoying this today. So this is Misery Trail. We're at an altitude of 1300 meters. So far, the track is perfectly fine. Eventually, the track starts to get steeper and steeper. Okay, it just I just put the car into low range. Oh, okay. So that just happened. So that is definitely no way forward. We are at an altitude of 1400 meters and Misery Trail has lived up to its name because in front of me, you can see that there's no way ahead. This is a freshly fallen tree. This must have happened, I'd say, last night. And there's no way to continue on. I don't have a chainsaw or an axe, so all I can do is have a closer look. No way to continue, so now we just need to turn around and head back. Luckily, I encountered this tree at the start of this track and not several hours down the track. So I haven't wasted too much time. After a few minutes, I'm back at Limestone Creek track. And this is the entrance to the Alpine National Park. Well, Misery Trail has lived up to its word. Fallen tree across the track, can't do much about it. Had to turn around and continue on along the Limestone Creek track. Okay, I've just taken a turn off of Limestone Creek, heading down to well, a different track. G'day, how are you going? How's the track up ahead? Oh, we've just turned around, we're just trying to get back up and get a bit okay. of time. So is, it, is it washed out or uh, it's I good? I think that you'll find, I've been in here for a long time. Yep. Good okay, alright. All 
All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Okay. So the track is uh, pretty good going, apparently, which is a relief. Okay. Oh, and uh, my squeaking suspension is back. Oh well, there's not much I can do about that. Except, close the window. Let me just put the camera on the roof. So this is the Limestone Creek track heading up to Davies Plain. And it looks uh, quite gnarly but uh, it's in good condition, I'm told, and it looks to be pretty dry, so that's always good to hear. Okay, so we're going to go into low range first gear. Ease our way down. The track looks pretty dry, which is a huge relief. You'll notice that I'm using low range first gear to keep my speed slow and I'm not using hill descent. Now it's not slippery enough to warrant hill descent in my opinion. I think simply using low range first gear is perfectly suitable for this. Up ahead, I'm going to go this way. Wow, that's very, very wet over there. Oh, there's a river crossing. The first for today. This is just a tiny one. By the end of today, I will not be so excited about river crossings. And I think that was Limestone Creek. The track is winding its way along the valley floor and it is a very, very pleasant drive. And I'm trying to follow my own advice. Always try and keep two wheels out of the puddle. Because if I get myself bogged, Yes, I can get myself out, but uh, I'd rather not have to play around in the mud. This little road closure. Okay, so that gate behind me was open. It should be right. This track is winding its way alongside Limestone Creek. Everything is uh, looking very, very damp from all the rain. A lot of puddles on the track, but uh, it's not too soft, it's quite drivable. And the track is really interesting. It's, uh, there's a lot of ups and downs and twists and ruts. It's a fun track to drive. So it looks like there's a bit of a river crossing up ahead. A bit of steep descent. And it doesn't look like the water's too deep. But this is uh, really awesome four wheel driving. Really, really loving it.
So we have a very steep descent, followed by a river crossing. So we are in low first, easing our way down. slide down the hill. You can immediately tell that this river crossing will be very easy. It looks shallow, there's not much of a current and we're just going to drive straight across. a very 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 rocky rough steep ascent oh, sometimes I can't see anything except sky in front of me and so the day progresses what could be more fun than driving in puddles on a nice cool day on a twisty road through some forests I'm having an awesome time Okay, I've just arrived at a river crossing. I have no idea how deep it is, but uh, I'm guessing it's probably up to my tire, the top of my tire at least. It's got a very strong current. So I'm going to turn on my diff locks just in case. Uh, traction control as well. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> the water was deeper than it was above my bonnet. On a positive note, the car doesn't leak, which is good. It was, I could, I could feel the current. As soon as I went in, the current was definitely pushing against the car. So that was, I had to get across there. So that was full power. But uh, we made it. Who made it? <laughs> uh, as long as I'm laughing about it at the other side and not crying in the middle of it. <laughs> it's all fun. After the river crossing, there's a very steep ascent. This is still a limestone creek track. Ooh. Wow, it looks like we've got rain coming. So it's currently 12 o'clock. I'm going to have to find a place to stop for lunch. And there appears to be a campsite coming up. I didn't think that that water crossing would be quite so deep. And now I know that it's a good rule of thumb to test how deep it is before you go through it. Ideally you would want to walk through the river crossing, but uh, well now it's raining and that means getting completely wet. I'm out here by myself. Now there's, there's no crocodiles or anything to worry about here, but uh, it was quite a strong current, so there's also that to consider as well. So 
I don't want to just walk into the water. Perhaps I'll slip, maybe the current will drag me off. Who knows what could happen, anything could happen. So I took a chance and decided to drive across that river crossing. G'day, how are you going? Good track ahead here, it's not too bad. Okay, uh, there's a river crossing up ahead. Uh, yeah, that way too. It's about this deep yeah, right. and uh, strong current. Yeah, okay. But uh, I got through it, so it's all good. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah. Same thing, alright. So, yeah. More fun. Good luck. <laughs> See you guys. Bye bye. It's always nice to say hello to other drivers and find out the condition of the track ahead. Most people are very friendly and happy to have a chat. So, more river crossings to look forward to. This is awesome four-wheel driving country. I'm forever going into low first, low second, back to drive, back down to low first, low second. Lots of ups and downs, lots of ruts, lots of river crossings. Bit of mud here and there, bit of slippery stuff, bit of rocky stuff. Bit of everything really. Oh, okay, that, that is 45 degrees right there. 45 degrees. I've got it in low first now. I need my low range gears to slow me down and not use the brake as much as I can. That is, I, I don't know if you can tell on camera how steep this is, but if if you're seeing me hanging like this on the seatbelt, then it's steep. <laughs> it is very, very steep. And I'm trying to keep the car as straight as possible. In case it starts to slide, I want to make sure that the front wheels are facing straight, dead straight. Because the last thing I want, just now, see, right now the car is now sliding sideways. Now it's straight again. That's what I was wor worried about. So I'm trying to keep my wheels in the ruts because that will also help guide me down and keep me in the straight line. The last thing you want on a very, very steep, slippery descent is for your car to start sliding down sideways, which is something we had a few days ago. But here we go, nice and slow. If you take it as slow as a caterpillar then you'll make your way down without any problems. Slow is definitely the key. And now the rain has hit. So I guess lunch will be that because I'm not getting out to cook or anything like that. But I'm absolutely loving this. Things are about to get much more interesting. Okay, there's a river crossing up ahead. This is a good place to stop and have lunch. Wait for the rain to go away. So it looks like it's uh, starts off shallow and it's clay colored so it's probably quite slippery and where it goes dark it probably gets quite deep. It's a bit of a current. I'm not particularly looking forward to this one because I 
think that's uh, it's going to be quite deep. If you see where the track goes, because there's a bend. Can I see? Okay, so this looks like it's deep all the way until the exit. So uh, that's going to be very, very interesting. Clearly the uh, recent rain has quite filled this up. Yeah. I'm a little bit worried about this one, to be honest. We've got uh, quite a current there and uh, it looks like it's quite deep for uh, quite a while so I need, I need some power and mind you that's where I came down just before and it gets steeper around the corner but uh, yeah there's not much I can do except go eventually now I can wait here and for the rain to stop but that's not going to change my luck I can wait for the rain to stop and do it then or I can do it now it's not going to make any difference whatsoever <sighs> hmm. I'm going to stay put for a little bit longer with any luck there might be another car coming through and we'll see how they go if there's another car if there's no car within say another half hour I'm gonna go through well the rain has eased up a little bit but it hasn't changed the situation at all the current is still flowing rapidly uh, no other cars have come past this way and I'm getting tired of waiting so make sure everything's recording or the cameras are recording that's important because if everything doesn't go well this may be the last time that I'm talking to you right so I'm going to put it in diff locks on traction control on low range yep okay I've waited I've waited about half an hour no vehicles have come past this way and I can't wait all day the water's not going to go down if anything is going to rise because all the rain that's fallen down has to make its way up past here so that's likely to raise the water level so the plan of attack is to make my way down through this shallow part uh, picking up slowly picking up pace until I get to the deep part where I will give it everything it's got and hope to God my little car can swim <laughs> oh, I'm laughing now I'm laughing now but I might not be in a little bit because I'm <laughs> getting worried is telling the truth now I've got my seatbelt off but my window is up now my window is up because well I don't know how high the water's gonna get before the water was up to almost the top of my door sill here oh shit <laughs> do I want to do this I've got no choice that looks particularly deep and the vehicle that I met earlier when I told them that I've just gone across a river crossing and how deep the water was they said yep same here, the water is above your bonnet. What can I do? Nothing. I'm just gonna have to just go for it. I'm gonna have to go for it. It's taken me half a day to get to this point and there's no other way around. I'm worried. I am worried. I don't have a working winch. That is the main problem. I don't have a winch that works. <sighs> All I have is some max traps on the roof. And that's not going to do any good in this situation. So if I do get stuck, 
In these situations, always thoroughly think through what you're about to do. What do I do if I get stuck? What's the plan B? And always have a plan B if things go wrong. I can try and reverse a little bit and go forward and try different ways. Yeah, let's just go for it. <sighs> oh shit. <laughs> I hope I'm making a very big deal out of nothing, but... <laughs> 